Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today I talk about the Indian experience with robotic assisted spine surgery. We are already 400 cases and counting. Now, medical screws I have been placing for the last 20, 25 years and more. My technique has been primarily freehand, but it has always been an issue for placing medical screws in obese patients in revision cases and severely deformed spine. And the pedicle we know offers the strongest point of attachment. Uh, it has been used for over 50 to 60 years. The pedicle screws have been widely accepted as an invaluable part of spinal instrumentation. And Linke went on to say that pedicle spinal fixation is a state of art in deformity correction. All of us use different techniques. We have, uh, uh, it, uh, it is based on our training, our experiences, the resources available. I prefer to use the freehand technique. Some surgeons prefer the fluoroscopic technique, but there is the issue of radiation and cumulative radiation to the surgeon. Of course, malplaced screws can cause a lot of complications. There can be dural injuries, root injuries, paraplegia. And of course, we know that serious complications are rare, but misplaced pedicle screws with greater than two millimeter per perforations have very poor biomechanical strength due to their malposition. The most challenging obstacle of placing pedicle screws safely in revision surgery is the fusion mass and the loss, lack of uh, anatomic landmarks. Now, whether one uses free end technique, intraoperative markers, radiographic control, the incidence of patients with pedicle screw malposition will always remain very high on account of the large number of screws that are placed. So how does one make dangerous spine surgery safer and improve or increase the accuracy of, spy, of pedicle screw fixation? Way back in 2012, Apollo Hospital was a pioneer in robotic assisted spine surgery. And we got the Mazor uh, second generation uh, spine robot called the Renaissance. This uses robotic guidance. It's based on virtual pedicle screw placement, which is done on a high resolution CT, which is taken prior to surgery and the planning is done. And this is done virtually on the computer screen and taken and a 3D sync is done at the time of surgery and the robot is placed on mounts and the correction is done. So here we have a child with uh, a double curve, which is severe and rigid. The pedicle screws have been guided using the robot and with the accurate fixation and good correction, she has a, an excellent correction. This child has a far more complicated deformity with multiple hemivertebrae and the spine is displaced in all directions and rotated in all directions. This becomes a huge challenge if one has to do it uh, manually. This is a CT scan, a virtual screw placement on the CT scan is done prior to surgery. And on table, you can see the extremely difficult trajectories for screw placement. This is the screw placement done from the left side for the right side pedicle. The pedicle screws are accurately placed, the hemivertebrae excised, and a good correction is achieved. Now, in this child who had a severe spinal deformity, congenital deformity, and had undergone multiple surgeries, this becomes a huge challenge. The child is small, the pedicles are small. She has had multiple surgeries, the implants have given way. So, this is a challenge where there are low, no landmarks for screw placement. The robot then comes, is very useful uh, in this, this kind of situation. And I don't think this kind of surgery can be done without the robot. So what's new? The, the next generation robot that we are using now is the Excelsius uh, GPS robotic navigation system. This has a very rigid arm which can be navigated real time 
and pedicle screws can be placed directly. No wires need to be used. The robot is multifunctional and has unique real-time information available and imaging versatility. As I mentioned, the arm is extremely rigid and all the instruments are integrated. So in this 13-year-old child with a severe deformity, we are able to do the intraoperative uh, uh, x-rays and based on the previous CT, which has been performed the day before, plan the screw trajectory as well as the size of the screws and place them perfectly to get a good correction. In the past, of course, because of the radiation issues, I never ventured into doing uh, minimal invasive spine surgery. Now, with using the robot, I'm able to do spine surgery in a much better manner and much more uh, efficient. Here we have a bust fracture, L1, and we guide the screws using the robot, do a segmental fixation. And here in this 14-year-old child, we are able to do, use the robot in a very unique manner. This is a child having tuberculosis uh, affecting the L2 vertebra. She has complete destruction, as you can see here. She has a huge abscess in front and around the L2 vertebra. The CT scan shows complete destruction of all parts of the L2 vertebra. The plan is to do a minimal invasive fixation in the lateral position, as well as the corpectomy of L2 and reconstruction and biopsy. Here you see the patient positioned and the X-ray pictures being taken. The robotic planning is also done. The robot helps the placement of the screws with the patient in the lateral position. The screws are in place through MIS incisions. Anterior corpectomy is done and a cage placed and the patient has a good recovery. This 32-year-old gentleman with cervical thoracic kyphosis due to ankylosing spondylitis has severe restriction of his activities of daily living. The sagittal x-ray shows the severe deformity. The CT scan shows the loss of landmarks, which would have made it very difficult and extremely challenging for placement of screws using the manual technique. After the patient is positioned, a 3D fluoro CT is done. This is fed into the robot and with real-time information, screws are placed perfectly in the cervical thoracic area. After a cervical thoracic osteotomy, the deformity is corrected and the patient has excellent sagittal restoration. Finally, I come to the 67-year-old lady who presented with low back pain with radiation to both lower limbs, gradually progressing over the last two months and interfering with her day-to-day -day activities, limiting her walking distance. She has a loss of lumbar lordosis, severe compression at the L45, L5S1 levels. After a preoperative CT is fed into the robot, the planning is done. This is a live image showing the 
screws in place, placed minimal invasive, as well as four level T-lift done to restore the lumbar lordosis. This is the post-operative images. Her pre-operative spine had a sagittal deformity, which was corrected. And the lumbar lordosis, which was extremely reduced pre-operatively, was brought back to normal. The advantage of minimal invasive surgery is that it allows us to mobilize the patient a few hours after surgery. And it shows the immense advantages of using the robot for doing these surgeries. To conclude, we are one of the earliest users of the spine robot way back in 2012. And over the last so many years, we have done over 430 cases. And I can definitely say that the robot plays a very important role in our sur surgical options that we offer to our patients. Thank you.